We are very excited and grateful to have Salima Linda Sanford with us today. Salima Linda received her Master's of Divinity degree from the University of Spiritual Healing and Sufism and is the author of Healing Your Marriage by Healing Yourself. She's a certified master healer and a passionate student of Sufism and healing. A respected Mukata Marabi and teacher in her local Sufi community and nationally, Salima is dedicated to holding the hearts of others through workshops, individual healing, and shared studies. Her Sufi name is derived from the quality Salam, meaning peace, safety, and wholeness. The quality Salim is often translated as a river of peace. She's encouraging everyone today to have a pen and paper handy for an exercise at the end of the teaching. Her teaching today is Taqwa, reverence and piety that come from the awe of God. Salima, welcome and thank you for being with us today. Thank you, Abdullah, for having me and thank you for having the Sufi community, which is so well organized and does so much for so many. So um, I'm glad to be a part of it. So the teaching today is on Taqwa. It's a, sometimes translated as fear, but it's the reverence is the word I like for it. And the reverence comes from deep bowing. So we may do some little bowing check-ins. And depending on the time, I'd like, we might do some recitation of equality because I'd like to save 20 minutes at the end for you to write an individual dua, dua. Um, just for you, between you and God, and we might have time to share them. Um, so you might be thinking during the teaching if something comes up and you think, oh, I would like more of that quality, or oh, that reminds me of something I'd like to ask Allah, you could jot that down and bring it into the dua. So I'll be talking about taqwa. What is it? Um, how do you get it? How do you hold it? How does it affect your relationship with yourself, with others with God, um, how do we nourish it, and uh, that's about it. So before the Fatiha, I'm going to ask you to, uh, and Abdul, you'll let me know if I get too quiet, the, um, ask you to check in on your bowing, and the way that I usually do it is I imagine myself in prostration, and then I imagine where my spirit is. And really, if your spirit is at 90 degrees, you're doing very well. My friend and I used to say, want to dig a hole in the ground so that if we put our head down low enough, our spirit would be properly postulated. But I'd like to do it because we can do it like before and after the Fatiha. And then we can do it after some of the readings because really more than just teaching you about taqwa, it's a place of the heart. And I'm hoping that at least one of these readings will move you a bit closer into the reverence, which has no end, and which is uh, the place from which we do our best actions and speech. So take a moment. Um, you've come here from somewhere else. You're readying up for the healing. You're wondering about the paper and pencil. Um, just take a moment as if you were about to begin prayer. You may be prostrating because you want to give a prayer to so for somebody. So your head is down, but just sort of imagine where your spirit is. Is it looking around? Is it 20 degrees. Okay, so holding that, I'm going to do the Fatiha, and that's the opener, and that's when the light comes in. As soon as you begin, Allah begins sending the light. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. 
So receive what's happening in your spirit, in your soul, in your heart. The we'll last and blessings to these beloveds who are on the call to join together in the community, to walk together, and to learn from your words and the words of your beloveds. In your name we pray. Amen. So in the Arabic dictionary, I found something very interesting on taqwa. It's from the root word wakaya, and the mutaki, or the plural is mutakim, are the ones who guard against evil and against that which harms and injures and are regardful of their duty toward human beings and God. One of the distinguished companions of the Holy Prophet said, a mutaki is a person who walks through thorny bushes, taking every care that his clothes are not caught in bushes or torn by the branches and thorns. In the Quranic language, the word would mean one who guards himself against sins and harmful things and takes God as a shield or shelter and is dutiful. So I really loved that imagery because Sometimes when I'm trying to walk softly or be soft or, or be reverent, it is, you can imagine walking through thorny bushes with such care that none of your clothing is caught in them. I think that's a beautiful metaphor. It's, um, not easy to explain a word in Arabic because it's got many ramifications. It's sometimes defined as fearing a law. And it's also defined as a continuous awe and reverence in the heart for a law, which prevents the person from doing deeds which are prohibited. Taqwa is that shield that comes between a person and what may harm his spirituality. And I like that too, having grown up with a lot of people using the term, oh, you need boundaries, you need boundaries, you need boundaries. But Allah, Allah is your boundary. And Allah sets it as large or as small as, as it's needed. And taqwa is that shield which guards. It's um, other definitions of it besides reverence or piety consciousness of Allah, which is used most frequently, especially in the Muhammad Asad Quran, which is very, very gentle one. He's almost always translated that consciousness of Allah. Virtue, righteousness, safeguarding yourself for Allah, deep respect. All of these things talk around uh, the nature of that. And this is from how the arrival is realized. And I'm I, I'm going to send after this is over just the names of the books I used and the page numbers so we don't have to uh, don't have to do it for everyone. God fearing is taqwa refers to a certain spiritual state of the self, which arises and results from reverential fear, kashya of Allah, and the feeling of nearness of Him most high. It manifests itself in every aspect of life and guides and dominates the thoughts and behavior of the God-fearing person. 
and yakin, which is another really beautiful word in Arabic, the certainty comes first because you can't fear that which you're not certain exists. And so the certainty leads into the taqwa. It's called the noble raiment, known only to the people of faith who are in awe of God. The God-fearing person is the one who, if he speaks, speaks by Allah. And if he is silent, is silent by Allah. And if he appeals, appeals only to Allah. Taqwa is to act in obedience to Allah, being oneself founded upon a light from Allah and out of modesty before Allah. Guidance comes before God-fearingness, and God-fearingness leads to gratitude. And elsewhere he says that the guidance comes through our willingness to be guided, and the guidance leads to the God-fearingness, which leads to gratitude and also leads to knowledge and marifa. Taqwa is indicated by three things, Siddhi says, excellent reliance on Allah, excellent contentment, and excellent patience. And it is actually the last part of how the arrival is realized following the surrender and the reliance in the Tawakul. And if you've never read lately the very last sentence in that book, I suggest you do that. It's very interesting. So Taqwa is a moral behavior and a path founded upon positive action and interaction so that one is truthful, sincere, and obedient both in the Hakika and the Sharia. But it's 250 places in the Quran. So it's, it's just all through the Quran, many variations. Most of you just look for the T and the Q with the vowel in between. And it's, it's mostly a, re, a relative of Taqwa. Here are five of the references. This is from um, 726, the clothes of God consciousness are the best of garments. So that's a nice imagery, wrapping yourself in God consciousness. 1063, those who believe and are conscious of God, for them there is good news in the worldly life and the hereafter. In Arabic, it's Aladina, Amanu, Wakanu, Yatakun, those who are conscious of Allah. Surah 3, 102. O oh, you who have attained to faith, be conscious of Allah with all the consciousness that is due to him. And do not allow death to overtake you with yourself having not yet surrendered unto God. Surah 3, 123. Remain conscious of Allah so that you will have cause for gratitude. 47, 17. Those who are willing to be guided Allah increases their ability to follow his guidance and causes them to grow in God consciousness. So you see all the things that are connected to having that God consciousness. And then the opening five ayats of Surah 2, Surah Baqarah, which begins, this is a book in which there is no doubt guidance for those who consciously guard themselves for Allah, the mutakin. And then it goes on, and I, I just find it so remarkable to say what a believer is and what someone who carries this, who is a mutakin, believes. Those who believe in the unseen and establish the ritual prayer and spend on others from what we have provided to them and who believe in that which has been bestowed from on high upon thee, O prophet, as well as that which was bestowed before your time and they have certainty in the final world and guidance from their Lord. And it is they who will find success. Okay, then a time check. Really, really good reading is in Music of the Soul from 155 to 157. And I think, um, I won't read the long version. But he moves from Isan as being a requirement for the taqwa. 
is the ship of safety. So he's talking about the holy water of the ship of safety traveled in. And this is city. You can only understand the true Atakwa when you drink yourself from the holy water. The source and the meaning of Atakwa, the highest good or deepest respect, is that you know in whose presence you sit. You sit like someone who serves in the court of his beloved God, a perfect king. Atakwa is like the deepest sensitivity because of the fear of being separated from the beloved, even for a moment, because without the beloved, there is no life. This reverence, fear, and awe are drawn from the well of the deep secret love by the power and grace of Allah. I'm going to read that last sentence again. Atakwa is like the deepest sensitivity because of the fear of being separated from the beloved, capital B, even for a moment. Because without the beloved, there's no life. This reverence, fear, and awe are drawn by Allah from the well of a deep secret love by the power and grace of Allah. So you don't make yourself reverent, reverent any more than we make ourselves bow. It comes by grace and, and we ready ourselves for it. For any person fearing Allah, reverent of the station of his Lord, forbidding himself to go astray, paradise is his home. And city in his gentle way. Do not be careless with the grace of proximity. Be aware of the truth of the nearness of the unseen. Like the man who sits and serves in the court of a perfect king. In the presence of the king, do not profess yourself to have knowledge because this knowledge is ignorance. And do not profess yourself to be humble because this humility is arrogance and vanity. Realize that the witness of closeness is greater than the knowledge of closeness. Be silent and realize where you stand. The true religion is to witness God the great by himself, not by you. So... Aqua reliance is a, is a state that moves with us and changes according to our station. Um, so there'll be some evidence of it here. And that's why it's sometimes confusing because in the he who knows himself, it talks about the fear moving into the awe, moving into the majesty, and it sort of leaves the beauty out. But that reliance comes at, at the end when you're in the wholeness. So it's not like it doesn't fit in any particular box. It's a heart, it's a heart thing. And this is from the Children of the Truth, which has a nice intro part about Sufism. At the beginning of the Sufi path, one stands in fear of Allah. In the middle, one learns the right behavior towards Allah. And at the end lies the actual knowing of Allah believing of everything other than Allah. Although it is defined as obedience to following Allah's orders and avoiding his prohibitions, uh, in my experience, these happen as a result of the taqwa. When the taqwa is awakened, you want to be obedient. Mm -hmm. And so I think that's kind of an important thing to stress. You want to fear, you want to please, and you are fearful of being separated, and you want to have excellent action. Now, one of the, this book has a lot that would increase your, your taqwa, um, because, and I'll just read you just a very short example. This is 174. The first pillar, it's got like three pillars about just saying Allahu Akbar before you do Salat. And it's a really good way to slow down your 
your salat and to be more mindful and to be more conscious to be to have more taqwa. So this is just part of the first pillar of the prayer. The first pillar is that of pronouncing the words Allahu Akbar. This is the takbir, the proclamation of the greatness of God, which opens the prayer, which should enter the performer of it into a state of ritual purity, so that his heart is filled with the awareness of the magnificence of Allah. The reciter should express this with his tongue, Allahu Akbar, until he is lost in Allah's power and gazing at his majesty. With all of this, he enters into the holiness of the prayer. However, if he does not make his fana in these two qualities, the power and the majesty, he may be distracted during prayer by what is not Allah, and not enter into the sacredness of prayer. If he enters his prayer with the quality of majesty, he performs the prayer in that manner and his tongue and his heart are at one with each other. And then he goes on there. But just that moment that you take that moment to enter into the majesty, that's a moment, I think, of reverence. So what got me interested in this is an experience I had. Uh, I'm one of those who learns only the hard way. But um, it was during Ramadan, and <clears throat> Stag for La was really pretty irritable for quite some time. And you can you have to laugh because you can almost see a lot going. I'll let her go on a little bit further, you know, just see how far she goes before she realizes that she's uh, not in the adab. <laughs> so it happened. And I, I don't know what I did, but during Ramadan, you know, you, you want to be excellent. And so I, it, it was just more frustrating. So I went too far um, and saw that and felt just terrible, just felt terrible and went to the room. I mean, I'm almost still shook about it. Went to my room and started to go into shame. I don't know if any of you ever had shame, but it's like you just want to stay a hundred miles away from, from that one. And so I just reached out for God, almost like that, they always talk about holding onto the rope of Allah. That's what it felt like. It was like, help, you know, just help, because I just didn't want to go there. And it just got all wiped out. I was just cleaned and with Allah. And in that moment, I thought, I don't ever want to lose Allah, you know. I'm so grateful, so grateful for that connection. And I, and I said, as you know, reading the Quran, there were people who had to sacrifice things, had to hide their faith or be in danger. And so I said, you know, if I was going to be killed, I wouldn't deny God. And I went to my husband, who's not even anywhere remotely on this path. And I, I needed a witness. I said I would. But I think that was the taqwa because it was just combination of fear and majesty and and a deep knowing and then I have been more poor <laughs> so is what I'm saying is the actions stem from from that and you know the walking is always the tasting and then the back a few steps and then the tasting but I had to share that because it gets my heart in into the teaching so Dalil, so if you look up in Fazia's book, you look up reverence, the only uh, reference to it is Jaleel. So I'm looking to see, because I wanted to, I don't think we'll have time for reciting it. We'll see. Um, what she says about Jaleel, when you repeat, you know, in Bil Jalali Wali Khan, it's the Jalal and Jamal. When you repeat this name, the angels surround you whose prayers resonate for you and enfold you with light. Al Jalil lets deep joy and freedom come up in the heart, as well as a deeply touching reverence for the divine. Whenever you become excessively carefree, Al Jalil brings reverence. And whenever there's too much fear, 
Alder Leo gives confidence and strength. So I think, let's just recite that at least 33 times to do it at Kana. Yala yajar Yala yajar liyo. Yala yajar liyo. Yajar liyo. Yajar Yala yajar liyo. Yala yajar liyo. Yala yajar liyo. Yajar liyo. So there were two other components I wanted to talk about with um, the talk one. And they they talk they're about relationship, relationship with yourself and relationship with others. And I think when you feel that taqwa, that reverence, it's impossible not to feel the light that's within you. It's, you're not just worshiping something that's not a part of you. So um, there are many reminders in Sidi's books about the light that we carry. And it's talked about when Muhammad being the last prophet, then that light was available to live in us. Um, Yeah, so I'm going to refer you to page 170, Music of the Soul, but I'm not going to read that one. It's, it's about, if you come to the ocean with a thimble, you get it filled. <laughs> you come with a cup, you get it filled. If you drown in the ocean, then you see Allah, and Allah sees you as you see him. The city writes, Taqwa is to act in obedience to Allah and is founded upon a light from Allah and hope of reward from Allah and out of modesty before Allah. So he writes, we move with the light. The light behind each action is what moves you in closer proximity to Allah. So you know that the humans are the ones that carry all the lights. And Ibn al-Arabi writes that the truth of our being is known only to us and to God and cannot be violated. It uses the word inviolable. So it's important, I think, as you're carrying the reverence to include yourself. Reverence for what, uh, for the creation that you are from God. And I read this short poem because I love the name of the book. It's, it's called Nobody, Son of Nobody. The light on your face you will take with you. All else, your sorrows, your joys, and all that you lay claim to, you will leave behind. The light on your face that you will take. Before we get to the duas, I'd like to talk about relationships. There's just some classic teaching CD does on relationships. And um, I don't know the source, but I was reading about piety. If you speak with piety and it's not in your heart, it's worthless. If you have piety in your heart, that's good. 
But if you can speak from that place, then, then you're complete, then your taqwa is complete. They said about Muhammad's speech that you could count his words. They were measured, they were carefully placed, you know. And you, you know, that's what that thing about be silent by Allah or speak by Allah was referring to. But I liked it that you could count his words. So the God-fearing person is the one who, if he speaks, speaks by Allah, and if he is silent, is silent to Allah. And if he appeals, he appeals to Allah. This is the paragraph on page 220 that talks about how to be with others. It's very, very, very difficult. Uh, I'm going to read it to you because it's got some more, it's got, it's a goal to set. Because we all get triggered, and often we think, at least if not just for a moment, that the other person was at fault. <laughs> but when we remember our Sufi teachings, you know, we, we can get out of that. But still, even if we deal with it on our own self, what they did disturbs us. And this is about how you can live in a place, which we've all been occasionally. Somebody does one thing and it doesn't bother you at all, and then the next day the same thing does. But this is just speaks to that. If you see a disobedient person, and he describes, defines that as someone who's turned away from God. If you see a disobedient person while you are immersed in your obedience, and his disobedience makes you blame and object to him, then his sin becomes visible because of your hardness. But if you are right in your obedience and in the station where you are obliged to help others, you will adopt a better way in which you will remain unchanged within. Yet at the same time, you will stop the sinner from sinning. You can erase the sin by your kind judgment and your high morals. I'm going to read it one more time. I think that line remaining unchanged within is a really good thing to aim to. If you see a disobedient person while you are immersed in your obedience and his disobedience makes you blame and object to him, then his sin becomes visible because of your hardness. You see, a lot through that, a food covers up our sins. Sometimes we don't see them because we're not ready to. So when you point them out to someone who doesn't see them, then it becomes visible. But if you are ripe in your obedience and in the station where you are obliged to help others, then you will adopt a better way in which you will remain unchanged within. Yet at the same time, you will stop the sinner from sinning. You can erase the sin by your kind judgment and your high morals. So um, as we as we move into prayer, there's one other piece that anyone who knows me knows this is one of my favorite things. It's um, it's from how the arrival is realized on yielding and submission, and I'm not going to read it, but it talks about when you're in a place, I guess, like I was that time where you're just broken you're just so needy it, he he describes it as an empty useless unwanted container crushed underfoot as only city can do but um i always thought that was a bad place to, to be and then selena adelstein did a teaching on it about that is where you want to be is just in full need of a law but this is the sentence that is so redeeming even you know, no matter where you are if you're in one kind of a heartbreaking moment All of this is the result of the brokenness of his heart and how imminent it is that the broken heart will be mended and how close mercy and provision are to him in this state and how beneficial this station is for him. One atom and one breath from someone like this is more beloved to Allah 
than the obedient acts of the spoiled ones who are impressed with their own acts and knowledge and states. I just find that to be so moving. It's kind of like that hadith where Allah forgives everything. But if you can call to Allah from there, you know, then Allah really answers. So as we write, I do as I just shared that so that we write them in expectation of Allah's generosity. So um, I'm going to read a few duas, and then I'm putting on the screen kind of a model. I'm just reading them because they're just things you would never think of to say in a dua, dua. One is from something called the Accepted Whispers, and these are Muhammad's duas, and the other is the Seven Days of the Heart, Ibn al-Arabi's duas. And I'm just reading pieces of most of them. Oh Allah, we beg you for yearning hearts that are humble and that turn to your path. Oh Allah, and this is the Muhammad's recorded to us. I beg you for faith that settles deep in my heart, a true conviction so that I understand that nothing can afflict me beyond what you have decreed for me and satisfaction with the provision which you have apportioned me. And the last one, O oh Allah, I beseech you for abiding faith, a fearful heart, beneficial knowledge, true belief, and the upright religion. I beg of you safety from all mishaps, full and lasting protection, and gratitude for that protection. I seek from you freedom from dependence, on others except for you. And he says at the beginning that the prayers that Allah most loves to answer relate around health, security, and protection. So from the seven days, Ibn al Arabi. I love this one. Assist me with an angelic pow power. And then it goes on. Erase the appearances of created things from the tablet of my mind. And through the hand of your providence, inscribe therein the mystery which is kept within your closeness. It's a really good one when your mind is just running overboard. Erase the appearances of created things from the tablet of my mind. And you always begin with addressing law, like, O oh, you to whom all faces turn. And, and a couple of more. Oh God, I take refuge in you from any speech that creates confusion or results in discord or sows doubt. It is from you that all words are received and it's from you that all wisdom is obtained. Oh, my Lord, bathe me in the radiance of your light, unveiling for me all that is concealed within me so that I may witness my existence in all its true perfection from your standpoint, not from mine. These are nice to have around to read from. So I'm going to share screen. And I need something on the screen. Can you read that, Abdullah? Uh, not yet. It's not up yet. Oh, it's not up? No. That's interesting. I shared screen. Okay. Okay, I have to hit the right button. Yep, there we that go. It? Yep, okay. that's it. All right. So um, the thing about doing the duas is that it's just a conversing with God. And after a while, you really kind of feel that friendship and you find things that you wanted to say that you didn't know you wanted to say. So it's a really nice practice. 
Um, so it begins with the praise, usually, not, not all of these did that, but praise or listing qualities. Who are you talking to? You know, it, It's like respect. Mm -hmm. In the middle of it is, here's the ones that I put down, possible, not all of them, but possible jumping off places. Protect me from, help me surrender my, I take refuge in you from, fill my being with, let me not forget, teach me, help me, clear for me, keep me, bring together in me, grant me, should be a different one. I'm grateful for, I ask you for, dispel from me, spread over me your, purify me that I might, free me from, forgive me. And then you always close with a blessing upon Muhammad and praise for God. You could do the salawat or whatever. So just, I'm just gonna give you some time to play around with that. What, what does your heart ask for? For you, because the prayers need to begin with you. And this day is for you. Something that will bring you closer or help your heart. Or you can use your own prompt. You can just say, you can just start talking. So. When you're done, you can put up a little, I think there's a place where you can put up a hand or something. If you have any questions also.
we've got a, a couple questions in the chat. Um, Nayar says, uh, thanks, beloved. Sorry if you've already mentioned it. But which book is this Dua extract from? It's very helpful. Uh, Salima, you're muted. Unmute yourself. Sorry. There you go. Yeah, there were two. One is Ibn al Arabi, The Seven Days of the Heart. And it's prayers for the nights and days of the week. Very interesting if you get this book. Because Tuesday, for example, begins Monday night. So when you go to the book, you'll go to Tuesday evening. And then the next day, which is actually our Tuesday, will, will be Tuesday day prayer. And then, then the eve of Tuesday night will be Wednesday eve prayer. It's pretty simple to figure out because of the sequence they come in. This other one, which is... Um, more daunting to look at, but worth definitely as worthwhile. It's called a beautiful name, The Accepted Whispers by Thanawi. I can't see. Um, and this, these are Muhammad's uh, supplications that he was witnessed saying. And you can feel the, the difference between them. Uh, Sarah asked a question, and Sarah, I'm not clear on what your question is. You texted me privately. If you want to re-send it to me, um, I'm not clear on what you're asking. Uh, or okay, my yes, go ahead. Yes, sorry, it's because my cell phone is in Spanish, so it translated all the questions into Spanish. Salam, Salima, I'm from Argentina. And my question to you is, um, I'm medicated. I'm in a state where if, hold on. If I don't pray all day, I don't find peace. What's your advice? And aqua for me, aqua for me. It's for everybody. And, and especially when you're brought to your knees and when you just, it's that place I was reading about, the, the place of the unwanted, useless can crushed underfoot that can only be made whole by its maker. You know? I mean, I don't. I missed sort of the details on on what you, what kind of illness you have, but it lies speaking to you in there sometimes. Not like you did anything wrong, but like there's a quality in there that um, lies trying to bring to you. So the taqwa, the reverence. All you need to do is believe in God to enter into that. And then the other thing is the bowing. Am I, am I audible? Can you hear me? Yes. Okay. I can hear you. Are you not are you not able to find the peace because of your illness? Um I don't know too many things, too many stressful things happen at the same time. Mm -hmm. So it's a combination of the illness plus the stress. Mm -hmm. And what do you do to connect with God in that? Do you have any practice that helps you at all? Um, um, I do diggers. And I try, I'm trying now for the first time to do the five prayers at the right time. Um, and I do qualities that Kamila gave me, Shemin, and my mom, Rauda Aguirre. I don't know if you know her. Oh, yes, I do. Everybody knows her. Such a beautiful smile she has. 
Oh, beloved. So you're her daughter. Yes. So the body recovers slower than the spirit. So the important thing is if you is to not give up and to grab hold of, okay. of the law and to know, like I read, that that one breath from someone who is feeling that needy is worth a thousand prayers from somebody who's perfect. It's just going to bring you very close to the law. Thank you very much. You're welcome. May God bless you. May God bless you too. Thank you, Sarah. So would anybody like to share their prayers? I realize that. Go ahead and unmute what yourself. What the process was like. If you're on a phone, you can hit star six and speak. I was so careful to not go over time that I ended up with time left. I can go if you would like. Okay. Assalamu alaikum. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. Yes. Um, oh Allah, the Rahman, the Rahim, the one, one who always have supported me, sustainer, giver of health and wealth and, and everything, a reminder of my life, the mighty, the merciful the most merciful than 70 mothers. There is no one, there is no help without you. You are the, you are Kahar and Vakil. Thank you. Protect me from every evil and everything which comes between you and me. Help me surrender my ego, ego self and my pride. I take refuge in you from everything and anything which take me away from you. Fill my being with your, with your light. Let me not forget that you are forever and I am not. Teach me the wisdom and the knowledge hidden in an al alim. Help me with everything. Clear me, clear for me the difficulties that I create for myself in this life and they will become a burden in the next. Please clear everything. Keep me protected and always on the path. Keep me always the one who are believer, who are surrender, who leave everything just for you. Bring together in me the strength that I, stay, I keep straight on my path. Grant me health and wealth and whatever I need in this life to become successful in the next one. I am grateful for everything. I ask you for everything because I have nothing and you have everything. Dispel me, dispel from me my, my burdens. Spread over me your kindness, your mercy. Purify me, that me I become a clean, and I become become the 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 soul you want me to be. Free me from my free me from my challenges which I have created myself. Forgive me for each and everything I do, because I am 
the sinner and you are the merciful forgiver of all dargoza thank you <sighs> that is that was so beautiful that was so beautiful mm -hmm. we in end it with the praise of the prophet and the amen always end with amen You know, there's a book of Quranic verses that was compiled for physical healing by, I think it was one of the daughters-in-law of Sidi. And she was sick and he said, find your healing in the Quran. And so she wrote, Jewels of Hope, which is sometimes available and sometimes not. And um, it was just, and she did heal through the researching of the, of the chronic series. Her name is Amal Jamal. That's not backwards. Yeah. To help people with affliction. That was just beautiful. Was that Sara that was doing that? Uh, Sadia Rahima. Oh. Oh. I forgot um, uh, Salima, yeah, and my yeah. beloved sister, my beloved um, teacher and sister, uh, to do the prayers for the prophet. You know. Yes. Um, yes. So just forgive me. And if you want, I can do the, the little salawat for the prophet because. Uh, yes, yes. yes. That. Blessings. That. Yes, thank you. Blessings for Muhammad and his followers and praise for God. Peace be upon our master Muhammad and upon all his family. Uh, so, Allahumma salli ala Sayyidina Muhammadin. Walahi wa sahabihi Sayyidina Muhammad. Allahumma salli ala Sayyidina Muhammadin. Walahi wa sahabihi Sayyidina Muhammad. Allahumma salli ala Sayyidina Muhammadin. Walahi wa sahabihi Sayyidina Muhammad. Wa barik wa salam. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Beautiful. Beautiful way to end the teaching, my goodness. So you uh, taught me much by those words of yours. So I think we're done, Abdullah, we're at time. Final thoughts, dua, prayers? Yes, yes, we'll end with the Fatiha, thank you. Guru Vallahi Mena Shaitani Rajim Bismillahi Rahmani Rahim Alhamdulillah Rabbi Alameen Rahmani Rahim Yalaki Yawmidi Yakana Budu Wahi Yakana Stahim Hikdina Sarat Al Mustaqim Sarat Al Adina Namta Alayhi while Mekdu Vialehi, Rado. Oh, beloved God, oh, beloved Lord, please bless all those on the call and all those who may hold in their hearts and all who are suffering and all who are reaching to you and those who are not. Amen, we pray. Amen.